Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon again, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We are going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do, the usual disclaimers. If you are unfamiliar with the Stop the Shocks campaign or the campaign against the troubled teen industry, you're going to find all the pertinent links right there in the description box. Please, in particular, take note of the article written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics. In it, they interviewed over 800 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called Behavior Modification Program. The Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read that article so much. They threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit. They did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic refused. You know the drill. Please read the article. Share on all your social media. Also included is Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding just in case the JRC ever does actually see through with their threat. Trigger warning one. When we discuss places like the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center or Agape Boarding School for Boys, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with mental health issues and disabled people being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. Trigger warning too, this channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously, parental supervision is very much advised. I would apologize, but this is what you get when, you know, you're an army brat whose stepdad was a truck driver. It is what it is. All right. So, on to comment 46. Some parents of individuals at JRC who exhibit SIB or AB comment that the ASDs have been the only treatment capable of reducing their family members' behaviors. That may be because, hun, you never got a full functional behavioral assessment done that was at the state-approved version. You can't just throw your kid from one program to another and expect it to work. Your kid's health care should not be Russian roulette. All right? operating with no baseline, no data. But, but it, is, is, it wouldn't stop otherwise, but when they used a the shock collar, then it stopped. Is that worth your child's misery? Is that worth your child having a lifetime filled with PTSD? It's worth your child's clinical depression or the anxiety issues we are already riddled with to be dialed up to 11? Is that worth your kid never really having a decent night's rest because they dream about the horrors they went through because of that device among all the other insane crap the JRC gets up to? Answer me those questions. Because parents, you've got to remember, at the end of the day, you are not paying the price. We are. You need to take that seriously. Take it to heart. You are your kid's front line, and in a lot of cases, the only line of defense. Okay? You cannot just sit there and watch your kid be abused repeatedly over and over again for years and just say, well, at least they're no longer abusing themselves. No, you replace them abusing themselves by justifying another person abusing them. And you justify it by saying, well, now they're not abusing themselves. They're still being abused. What's not to understand here? But it's not as bad. Just below the lethal limit multiple times a day. Shocked for getting up for three seconds from their seat because that might be a sign of aggression. You could literally argue with the JRC's logic that me drawing out in 
and exhaling out could preempt violent behavior. So I got to be shocked for that. You can use the JRC's logic to make that argument. That's how insane it is. Okay. The fact of the matter is, in spite of the fact that we have brought it to your attention multiple times, that if you take the steps the way they are supposed to be took in the order that they are established, it may not be a quick fix. This is not the healing pill that descended from the heavens. Because that's not how any of this works in real life. Meaningful strides forward start with baby steps. It's little things improving here and there. And it gets larger and larger and more over time. Okay. You can't sit there and say, but my kid's been thrown out of multiple programs and this is the only thing that makes them stop hitting themselves and use that as a justifiable argument to have somebody else abuse your child in your child's stead. It makes no coherent sense and it makes you sound insane. Okay. That's not how this should work. We should not create a treatment that will just replace me abusing myself by having my staff member abuse me instead. All right. There are other ways to quote unquote reduce behaviors to a baseline without resulting to direct violence. Nor can you tell me the ends justify the means because it stops behaviors when there's no longevity to it. It stops it for five seconds. And just like us Gen X kids used to do, guess what happens? Yeah, that. Right? If you've learned nothing else from my generation, please learn that lesson. You think the last generation that faced corporal punishment was deterred in any way, shape, or form from doing crazy shit that might have got us killed. I would argue that it actually fueled us where we go to more extreme acts as an act of rebellion and anger due to that corporal punishment. And I can make a pretty good argument towards it. All right, let's continue. They argue that a ban on the ESD for SIB or AB would force them to resort to ineffective and risky therapies such as restraints and medication. This is the argument the JRC uses, and I swear they shove it down the parents' throats and then tattoo it to their brain. None of that is accurate. None of that's accurate. Explain to me like I'm five what is risky about positive behavioral reinforcement. Please explain it to me like I'm five. Explain to me like I'm a five-year-old what risk there is with person-centered planning or OPT. There isn't any. I don't have to worry about in my person-centered planning treatment program that anyone within my circle of support at any point in time is going to force on me some form of violence. I never have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about getting second and third degree burns and being shot near catatonia or being starved or ignored or having to allow people to touch me even when I don't want it. That's all ABA, folks. JRC is the most extreme and notorious, but it's all embedded in ABA if you want to do your research for two seconds. And I know I'm risking another strike. I don't care. 
There are plenty of other autism advocates out there who've gone through ABA who are more than willing to back me up. Okay? You can't sit there that me replacing my child's abuse of themselves with a staff member to abuse them instead, and it's the only thing that works, is ever a logical argument to be had because it isn't. Remember when I tell you some of these parents seem to be incredibly selfish? This is what I'm talking about. The JRZ is presenting to them a picture of their child that they want to see. And they are going to attack anything it's going to attack the delusion that the JRC so painfully and painstakingly painted for them. They want to believe what they see. They don't want to look any deeper. Because then at some point, they're going to have to acknowledge what they have allowed to happen to their child. if they even care that much. Another comment states that the FDA has dismissed such parents' views on the basis that a very small minority claimed they were either were coerced or misled because they were coerced and misled. It is not a logical argument to say, I'm going to stop your child's self-abuse by putting a staff member there to abuse them instead. It's not a logical argument. Your kid's still getting abused. What's not to get there? Your kid's being starved. They're being sleep deprived. They're being shocked within an inch of their lives multiple times a day at just below the lethal limit. Some of the youngest students strapped to that thing are nine years old. And by the way, it's not a small minority who are making this argument. It is the majority, friends. And no, it's not the those awful demonic autism rights activists. Spare me. Spare me, please. All right. Spare me the bullshit. All right. The whole of the medical model has spoke out against this. The whole medical model, folks. Getting a consensus of that level from the folks that are within this frame of work, it's, it's miraculous, all right? We don't agree on a whole hell of a lot. This is all the rest of the field that's saying this. Not just us autism rights activists. It's people in healthcare, people in mental health, people who are behavioral therapists. It is providers. The biggest one being ARC, the by far largest provider of services to disabled people of all ages in the United States, bar none. Bar none. That's not a minority. That's the majority. Okay? Tired of the gaslighting nonsense. This is not a minority here. This is a unanimous outcry against this insanity that goes against even the current medical model as we know it. As we know, has been riddled with its own issues for decades. But the one thing we can all find consensus on is that that's a lie. 
but that's what the JRC has taught them to say. But they'll be medicating the catatonia, risky therapies that may harm them. Positive behavioral reinforcement has never caused anyone to be in a catatonic state for a month. Person-centered planning, including the circle of support, has never caused me second to third degree burns. OPT, as far as I know, has never caused sleep deprivation or starvation. Okay? This is not a small group of individuals. This is the entirety of the medical model. The entirety of the majority of the largest service providers for people with disabilities, not just in the United States, but some in the world, all have come out against it. If that's what they call a minority, I'd hate what they think a majority is. We're going to close on that, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel, and the few we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. You know the drill. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit those comments. I appreciate your time. As always, folks, we here at Smilling Tea hope you have a good one. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye, everyone.